بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد الحمد لله brothers and sisters we thank you so much to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator sustainer cherisher and nourisher the same salutation salawat and salam upon his last and final prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are busy discussing this beautiful book of Hafiz ibn Hibban rahimahullah ta'ala in which he in captures 50 sub principles which guarantees a person's success uh, in every sense of the word in his in this world and in the hereafter as well and beautiful lessons which are aimed at giving us the best chance of at life uh, and you know being able to benefit ourselves and be successful in our careers in our lives in our family lives as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth. So today, without much further ado, we are discussing this topic of learning gentleness, learning to be gentle and uh, staying away from being uh, hasty and impulsive. So these are two opposites, being gentle, uh, kind, tolerant, this is the lesson of rifq in the Arabic word he uses rifq and at the same time being cautious of not being hasty and you know quick uh, tempered or impulsive making decision brothers can just give me a second So as I was explaining, uh, this is the topic under discussion today, the encouragement towards being gentle in all our matters from the way we uh, approach any problem, any discussion, any relationship. We are gentle, we are compassionate, we are thoughtful, and we are not hasty and we don't jump the gun as we say, you know, we don't make quick decisions based on emotion. Uh, as always, he brings a hadith of Rasulullah to make his point in the first paragraph. And here he brings a hadith of Rasulullah. The person who has been given gentleness and softness as a character trait, he has been given all goodness. And the one who has been deprived of this quality of being gentle and accommodating and soft has been, you know, deprived of all good. And this is an, there's another hadith also connected to this. <coughs> These are authentic hadith. This one is in Muslim. That in Allah, Rafiqun yuhibbu rifq. Allah Himself is kind, is uh, accommodating is is, is 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 soft and he loves this quality in human beings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors yu'ti ala rifq allah opens the opportunities on gentleness and on softness such opportunities and such doors and such relationships mala yu'ti ala which he does not open on harshness, on strictness. And this was the character trait of Rasulullah himself. Nabi, uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha used to say that if Nabi sallallahu was ever given two options, two options of doing something, he would always choose the easier option. Uh, when we say easier option, of course, we don't mean, uh, you know, the easy way out. No. If both were permitted and both were, uh, were permissible and both were from Allah and both were are okay in Sharia, Nabi Ali Salam always choose the more convenient option. Why? Because he wanted for his ummah. He always thought, he always thought about us, about others. You know, that he applied the difficulty on himself, the taqwa on himself, but when it came to others, he always you know, exercise gentleness, softness, 
um, and accommodating nature, never, never hasty, never harsh, never strict, never, you know, being very, um, you know, difficult to be around. Uh, and, and, and even in the early days of Islam, this is why Allah opened so many doors for Rasulullah Sallam that in the period of 23 years, Allah created such a change in the whole world, subhanAllah, because of this nature of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, there's, there's a book which documents the hundred great um, individuals of history. And in that book is, you know, scientists and, uh, you know, philosophers and generals and prophets and all different kinds of people. It's written by a non-Muslim, Michael Hart. And there in that book, uh, he, and number one, puts Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's position at number one. And his own prophet, Jesus, Isa Alayhi Salam, he puts at number four. And he writes there that people might question my choice of putting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Prophet Muhammad as number one. But it just goes without saying that in such a short period of time, such an impact this individual, this this person made on this on this world, which is so lasting and such a great impact, Subhanallah, that you know affected nations and countries and um, you know the world empires, and in such a twenty three years of of time, and this brothers and sisters comes down to that character, noble character of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We always speak about it. We always listen to it. And we always know the importance of it, but somehow, somehow when it comes to the crunch, we forget about it. Our emotions run away with us, our anger, our hatred, our envy, our malice, our, you know, disagreements control us and and, and run away with us. So um, we ask Allah to guide us and we ask Allah to give us these beautiful qualities. So this quality of achieving, uh, he... uh, Hafiz ibn Hibban then mentions here that وَمِنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ عَلَى الْحَسْبِ الَّذِي يُحِبُّ إِلَّا مُقَارَنَةَ الرِّفْقِ وَمُفَارَقَةَ الْعَجَلِ To achieve, to be able to achieve your goals and your intent in life, the one way to do this is by exercising gentleness. Whether in the work environment, whether at home, if we want to you know, make tarbiyah of our children, or we want, uh, you know, uh, promotions and success to come in uh, our business life. Or we want, you know, uh, for us to have relationships with our uh, families and in It's always going to come with gentleness. And of course, gentleness does not give immediate, uh, you know, um, immediate gains. But the gains are lasting and the impact is very, very deep. And that comes by, you know, exercising that. He's, a poet says so beautifully to make this point. That the one who takes his time is gentle, is thoughtful. He perhaps will achieve some of his goals, but also the one who rushes quickly to say something, quickly to ex- express the anger, is hasty, is impulsive, they will perhaps have many mistakes in their life and they will make many errors uh, saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. He brings another poem, poem here of Muntasar bin Bilal al-Ansari. He says, Arrifku mimman sayalqa al-yumna sahibuhu wal khirku minhu yakunu al-unfu wa zalalu um, a good outcome is achieved. Uh, that a person will achieve good outcome, good omen, good luck by having gentle behavior, accommodating, giving people chance, uh, overlooking and foolishness. Foolish behavior and, and foolishness will be the outcome of the one who exercises, you know, uh, harshness and strictness, and they will end up making a lot of mistakes. And then he says, waiting patiently 
is part of caution that when you wait patiently and when you see an opportunity, you take the opportunity, but you take it after having patience. And not to take the opportunity at that time will only bring, uh, you know, uh, uh, failure. So he's saying here, balancing the two things, brothers and sisters, of course, when we say being gentle, being kind, being slow, being thoughtful, this does not mean that a person becomes lazy or it doesn't mean that the person just sits back and let things go by. No, he's saying, hazmu maru fursatahu, that it is of caution. It is part of caution that a person patiently waits for his opportunity. And when his opportunity comes, he grabs it. He does not try to, you know, as they say, put the cart before the horse and tries to go before his time and do something before it's ready, as they say in, in, in Urdu, to, uh, you know, make the roti or make the bread before the oven is hot, to put it before it's hot, meaning you did something before the time, you said something before it was the right time. So to do it when the time is right, and not to do it at when the time is right, then this can only And to stay back when the opportunity comes and it's the right time and not to seize the moment, this is failure. So subhanAllah is bringing this beautiful balance, not to be too quick in our decisions, but not to uh, delay as well when the opportunity arises. He brings another uh, poem of a of 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 a, of a poet who says wazin al kalama idha nataqta fa inma yubdi al uqul aw al ayub al muntiq that when you talk measure your words measure what you are saying think about the consequences of what you are saying because when you talk this exposes either your intelligence or your faults your weaknesses. It exposes one of the two things. Whenever you talk, it exposes your faults and your errors, or it exposes or it shows your the level of your understanding and intelligence. He explains here about this aspect of uh, you know moderation uh, and and being gentle. Alayka bi wajhil qasti fasluk sabilahu. That when you uh, approach any matter, when you deal with any uh, situation, do so with moderation. Don't lose your senses. You know, this is the anni. This is the anni to take your time, to think, to try your best. It's not easy, but to try your best to detach your emotion from the situation. Detach your, give yourself some time. You don't have to answer immediately. You don't have to give a decision immediately. Separate yourself from the situation, from the person for some time to think about the situation, to calm down and approach it with moderation. First look, Sabilahu, take this path, he says. Fulfill Jauri because to act impulsively, to act immediately. A husband and wife are having a dispute and argument. And the husband feels that, you know, I need to say these few things and I need to put my wife in a place and I need to, and the wife thinks, no, he's had enough. I've had enough of him and I need to let him know what I think about him or, you know, and I need to put it all out there and I just need to get it off my chest and I need to do it now. That's impulsiveness. That's being brash. That's talking based on our emotion. He says, fulfill jawri, to act in this way, ihlakun, is only destruction. It only destroys relationships. It only destroys opportunities. It only breaks up families. It, it spoils with colleagues. It spoils with, uh, you know, with those around us. So he says, always manage yourself with moderation. Then, he mentions, the poet mentions to know yourself. You need to learn who you are. What is your temperament? What is your personality? If you don't know your own value, he says, if you don't know your own value, 
and what is your abilities and what you are capable of and what you are not capable of to hamilaha ma la tutiqu fatahliku you will uh, take on yourself something which you cannot manage and this will destroy you so know your capacity know your personality know your temperament know uh, you know yourself well and know how much to take on and how much not to take on of course again i will add here this doesn't mean that a person should use this to be lazy in life to you know take the back seat and to say no no we are taught in islam also always to do our best to push ourselves to uh, the, our highest potential ihris ala ma yanfa'uk as the hadith says wala ta'jiz you know do your best when you see opportunity go for it don't be hopeless don't be helpless but in that too we have a capacity and we need to understand and know our capacity and not take on ourselves that which is beyond our capacity otherwise we are asking for trouble the author of the book may allah have mercy on his soul uh, he says arafiq la yakadu yusbaq that the one who is gentle and thoughtful cannot be overtaken subhanallah we normally understand it the opposite that the one who is hasty the one who goes out and you know is 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 attacking and is hunting and is there pushing himself forward he's the one you know is going to is going to seize the day but the author is saying the opposite the one who is thoughtful he takes his time you know doesn't rush a rafiq la yakad yusbaq although he seem he seems slow but he's deliberate he will not be surpassed he cannot be surpassed kama anna al ajala la yakad yulhaq just as the one who is hasty and fast cannot you cannot catch him up but catching that one up is 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 unlike not being able to surpass being able to surpass the one who is gentle <clears throat> then he brings uh, the other part of this discussion about being hasty and impulsive and you know uh, harsh and 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 and, and very hot headed and you know acting without thinking uh, you know being quick in our in our actions thoughtless he says to be like that means is to talk before you understand to talk before you understand and how often does that happen with us brothers and sisters we are sitting our friends are talking somebody is saying something and we don't really know the situation well we really don't know what has happened we really don't know the background we haven't understood it well enough but just because everyone is talking we also have to add our opinion or our thought or our you know um, ideas to it and sometimes we find out later that uh, you know that was incorrect and 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 our opinions change and our ideas change but to go back and retract and to go back and to say you know what i said before was wrong and what i what what i believe now is 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 correct if a person does this repeatedly you lose you know reputation you lose social credit uh, as somebody who just speaks out and you know is flip flops changes your changing their ideas all the time changing their opinions so it's always best to know a matter you know inside out before any opinion on that matter is 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 share is you know is 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 expressed and uh, it doesn't mean that people are talking we also need to talk uh, and we also need to say something he goes on and says wa yajibu qabla an yafham somebody who is hasty impulsive answers before they understand so it does not mean again i mentioned earlier that if a question is asked that we have to answer the question sometimes it's almost go you know we feel like it's a social pressure that if somebody asks me a question i have to answer if i don't answer it's rude or if i don't answer it shows my ignorance no definitely not we can say you know i'll get back to you give me some time to think about this and uh, i will get back to you let me uh, discuss it 
you know, with others or with whoever, my, my family, and I'll get back to you. We don't, we have, we are under no obligation to answer anything immediately. We need to, uh, you know, we have a full right to think about our response to even, even on, a, on, even on a phone call, even on whatever it is, you know, if we are asked a question or we are asked opinion and we know that what we are going to say is going to have some, you know, consequence, good or bad, we need to be more thoughtful about that. Step back a bit, detach ourselves, have a think about it, discuss with others, take mashura and then give a response. Wallahi azim like this, we will make so much less mistakes in life. We will second I guess ourselves much less that oh i shouldn't have said this i shouldn't i should have rather did that i should have rather. we will be more in control of our matters our emotions will more be more in control because we are acting deliberately we are acting we are in control of our of our thoughts and our actions another another uh, quality of somebody who is impulsive is that they get impressed quickly. Hafiz ibn Hibban says that they praise quickly without experiencing uh, some, you know. So, for example, they, they make an acquaintance or friend and immediately they are impressed by this person. And they, for example, I'm just giving an example, they go around, you know, praising this person and, you know, putting them on a very high pedestal. But then as they get deeper into the relationship they notice you know it's not this person is not who i thought he was and now when they experience something else now they begin criticizing the same person so again that aspect of not being you know stable not being somebody who is uh, thoughtful somebody who is very reactionary this is the kind of quality which Hafiz uh, ibn Hibban is speaking to us about that we should not have. It's not a quality of a successful person. It is not a quality of somebody who wants to make it, you know, make their life successful as in, in, in any sphere that they are in. And this person makes a full decision to go ahead without thinking things through. And, and to start his whatever he's decided, even before he's thought things through and, and had a, you know, good think about everything. And he says the only outcome is one. That uh, being hasty, being, being impulsive will always be accompanied with regret. If a person is in, impulsive, hasty, harsh, jumps to conclusions, dumb to decisions, this is the, the only outcome of this that will uh, accompany this is uh, you know um, regret salama and and safety security protection will move away from him he opens himself up to a lot of criticism a lot of problems a lot of mistakes a lot of loss uh, because of you know uh, this this habit and the, the arabs used to say he says the arabs used to Give an example that al ajalatu ummun nadamat al ajalatu ummun nadamat that being hasty, being fast is the mother of all, is the root of all regrets. Subhanallah. I mean, a simple thing like rushing on the road, right? Now I'm getting from point A to point B, and uh, you know I am, you know, rushing. So I'm, I'm not. Sticking to the rules of the road, I am, you know, I'm speeding. I am you know, going through, you know, uh, an orange light. I am, I'm not stopping properly, and I think that I'm getting ahead, and I think that I'm getting there quicker to my destination. But this behavior of mine on the road could cause Allah forbid, la qadar Allah, an accident could cause something which. Uh, would not only delay me for that moment, but Allah knows, Allah protect everyone. It could delay me for so many weeks and so many months just because I was hasty, I was, you know, impulsive. I was trying to, you know, get to do something before it's time uh, and, and pushing something, you know, outside of the normal uh, situation. 
So, so this is it. That al ajal to ummun nadamat. When a person is hasty and impulsive, this becomes the root of many uh, regrets. Abiz ibn Hibban rahimahullah uh, goes on to um, uh, mention uh, a statement of Khalid bin Barmak. He says, whoever is able to protect himself from four things, then فَهُوَ خَلِيقٌ أَلَّا يَنزِلَ بِهِ كَبِيرٌ مَكْرُوهٌ If he protects himself from four things, he will never, uh, he will protect himself from falling into any major problems in life. What are those four things? One is al-ajala, to be hasty, impulsive, uh, uh, brash, quick-tongued, quick, quick uh, you know, uh, react, uh, reacting quickly without thought. Wallajaja to number two, being in the habit of argumentation, uh, arguing, uh, you know, all the time. If a person protects himself from being impulsive, number one, from having an argumentative nature, uh, number three, well, ujbu, uh, you know, not having a very inflated uh, impression about himself, um, having a big ego, not a, a big sense of sm uh, of, of self, what uh, tawani, and not being lazy. These four things, if he protects himself, inshallah, he will not make any major errors in his life. He said, فَثَمَرَةُ الْعَجَلَةِ النَّدَامَةِ The outcome of impulsiveness, brashness, rushing is only regret. وَثَمَرَةُ الْلَجَاجَةِ الْحَيْرَةِ And the outcome and fruit and result of argumenta argumentation and nitpicking and going into all small details and, you know, tit for tat kind of behavior, this brings about hayra, it brings about confusion, it brings about, you know, uh, uh, confusion, that, that's the word. وَثَمَرَةُ الْعُجْبِ الْبِغْضَةِ And to have, a, 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 the, you know, a, a bloated self or inflated uh, self-ego, that uh, the outcome of that is, is hatred. People will hate us for this. وَثَمَرَةُ التَّوَانِي الذل. And to be lazy, to be sluggish, to, you know, not be, you know, people who get there and get the job done and put ourselves forward and make effort. This, uh, the, 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 the outcome of this is dhul, is, is, is disgrace and, you know, uh, being downtrodden all the time. So, subhanAllah, these are the four qualities. He says, if we protect ourselves from these four qualities, again, to be impulsive and hasty, number one. Uh, number two, to be argumentative, nitpicking. Number three, to be uh, have a higher, uh, you know, higher than needed self uh, image of ourselves, high ego, inflated ego. Or number four, to be lazy. If we protect ourselves from these four things, inshallah, Hafiz ibn Hibban, rahimahullah, is, is saying from Khalid bin Barmak, that we won't, you know, suffer any major errors in life. May Allah grant us these qualities, inshallah. Uh, he goes on to explain a bit about this nature of being sluggish and, and uh, you know, now we just, you might wonder what's going on here. We're speaking about, uh, you know, gentleness. Then we're speaking about its opposite, about being hasty. Uh, how does sluggishness come into this? He's saying that, yes, be gentle, be thoughtful, don't rush and don't be hasty, but beware not to become sluggish and lazy. Don't misread gentleness and thoughtfulness to mean that you need to take the back seat and, you know, just become an observer. No, it doesn't mean that. It, and and, and, and he, he speaks about the negative impact of, of tawani and sluggishness and laziness. He says, Sababun najahi tarkun tanawi. The tawani, that the 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 reason or, or uh, a reason for success in all our matters will be that we leave out sluggishness. We become active, proactive, 
and wadawa wadawail hirman al kasl and that which attracts attracts deprivation attracts loss attracts this this will be this is uh, you know al kasl laziness uh, so this is something that we need to be clear about inshallah it is the enemy and punishment of the youth of our nation he says that the youth generally and that although the energy of youth is very high the mashallah strength is there but they are plagued and dogged by this you know lazy attitude youth go through these challenges and it's up to us as parents as teachers to inspire them to motivate them to talk to them to let them know of uh, you know what uh, capacity and potential Allah has kept within them so they can you know uh, rise above that that nature of of laziness and sluggishness in fact umar radiyallahu an uh, we all know this famously that he was in the habit he would note he would watch any people any young man would drag his feet or sit in the masjid with his head down he would whip them he would say what are you what are you doing what are you doing here go out work make effort do make something of your life don't drag your feet and uh, and subhanallah those were the days when sahaba radiyallahu anhu did what they did that's why islam so so high and inshallah we as the sons of sahaba radiyallahu anhu have the same energy the same fervor and we have the iman as well so for us to get out there and to inshallah you know put our best foot forward being active in 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 our lives for the benefit of our families our communities for the benefit of islam for the benefit of uh, you know the sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are the defenders of deen we are the ambassadors of islam we are the soldiers of of uh, of uh, you know of the quran it is up to us to take this aspect out and you know and 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 practice it and 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 implement it inshallah and express it through our actions and through our words uh and yes maybe one last point hafiz ibn hibban brings here he says that he gives the story about aktham bin saifi he says ma yasurruni anni nazaltu bi dar al ma'jiza explaining the same aspect about sluggishness he says aktham bin saifi says i am not pleased it doesn't i'm, I'm not excited at all about you know being in a place where i'm served all the time that you know hand and foot i've been served i'm just sitting and i'm been given fa asmantu wa albantu i'm giving i'm given all kinds of food and all kinds of drinks so somebody told him why you know why not and and we all i mean would like you know uh, you know that situation where we are you know uh, treated so he says no la in la anni akhafu an attakhidha al ajza adatan because he says i'm so conscious that if i find myself enjoying that i'm i fear that that should not become my habit it should not become my habit that i want to be served all the time and allah forgive us we our you know when we were growing up our parents took so much care of us we would not even pick up you know perhaps a, a spoon from the table and put it in the in the sink you know we would order our sisters and our brother give me this and bring me that and do this for me and do that for me uh, a person becomes very quickly used to being served so he says to protect myself from this i wouldn't want to be in that situation i want to keep my i want to, i want to keep myself accustomed to being to living tough i want to keep i don't want to become soft as as they say and hafiz ibn hibban brings another um, poet poem here explaining the same thing he says wa alayka fi ba'd al-umur su'ubatun keep yourself uh, accustomed to tough living wa rifq lil mustasabat miranu you know wa bi husn al aql al mar'i yuthbitu haluhu wa ala al magharis tuthmiru al idanu what you sow so shall you reap what you sow so shall you reap so keep yourself uh, you know active keep yourself you know uh, focused on on achieving things in life 
And while you are achieving, if you really want to achieve opportunities and goodness, then use that aspect of rift, softness, kindness, patience, and uh, you know, being gentle in all situation instead of being uh, brash, uh, you know, and uh, uh, rushing and and impulsive and quick, making quick decisions without thought. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us these beautiful qualities that these elders have written about. Brothers and sisters, this book uh, was written by a scholar who passed away in 300 and something Hijri. 300 and something Hijri. Just 300 years after Rasulullah this book was written. Subhanallah. You can study all these things in, this, in the self-help books now, but Islam is speaking about these things from, from its very early days. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us these beautiful qualities. Uh, this uh, is available, inshallah, and all the others in this series are available on our YouTube channel at Nurul Huda Academy under the playlist of the, the, the heading of this book, which is Rawdatul Uqala wa Nuzhatul Fudala. We can find it all there. Inshallah, next week there will be another program taking place uh, for the students of the madrasa. And the following week, uh, maybe I'll just have a look here. Yes, the following week after that, inshallah, we will have uh, uh, the next chapter, which is Dhakru Dhikrul Hathi Ala Ta'allum Al Adabi Wa Luzum Al Fasaha, the encouragement on learning, uh, you know, uh, uh, mastering etiquette, good etiquette and, and, and eloquence. May Allah grant us tawfiq and accept from us. Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, subhanakallah, wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين